So let's take a look at the quick sort algorithm. Here's a list of numbers that we're going to sort out. And the way the quick sort algorithm works is that we take what we call a pivot point, which is a number in the list, and we sort it so that all of the smaller things are on one side of the pivot, and all of the bigger things are on the other. So let's, for example, just take our six right here as our pivot, and we're going to move all of the smaller things to the left of the pivot, and all of the bigger things to the right. So we're going to end up with the four on the left of the pivot, the five on the left of the pivot, the three on the left of the pivot, and the two on the left. The six stays essentially where it is, and then all of the bigger things end up on the right of the pivot, okay? So we've kind of sorted the list, right? And so the way the quick sort works is that we choose a pivot, we move things that are smaller to the left, bigger to the right, and now that we've done half the list, we don't need to compare things on the left of the list with things on the right of the list. So all we've got to do is take the left of the list, we choose a pivot point, in this case let's choose the five, and we move the smaller things to the left and the larger things to the right. So we're going to move the four, the three, the two, the five, and the six stays where it is. And the five can stay where it is. Now we choose another pivot point, in this case the three, and we move the smaller things to the left and the larger things to the right. So we've got the two, the three that stays where it is, the four, the five, and the six. And so we've sorted the left-hand side of the list. Notice that when we did that, the four, the five, the three, and the two got compared to the six initially. But they've never been compared to the 10, the 8, the 7, the 12, and the 14. So we're comparing things on the left-hand side to the pivot point once, but we never then compare them to anything on the right-hand side. As we go down, well, in this case, the 5, we compared the 4, the 3, and the 2 to the 5, and so um, we had a slightly worse comparison, but then we're dividing in half, and we're dividing in half, and we're dividing in half. The 2, for example, never gets compared to the 4 even though they end up in the right place. And so by dividing in half like this, we have this log n complexity. Of course, we've done the left-hand side of the list, we do the right-hand side of the list, how do we do it? We do it the same way. We choose a pivot point, um, in this case, let's choose the seven, we'll move the smaller things to the left of the seven and the larger things to the right of the seven. So we'll end up with the seven, the 10, the 8, the 12, and the 14. We choose another pivot point, we move the smaller things to the left, and the larger things to the right. We choose another pivot point, and in fact now my list is sorted. Okay? So the idea with a quick sort is that we choose a pivot point, we move the smaller things to the left, and the larger things to the right. So how do we choose the pivot point in the quicksort algorithm. Here's another list of numbers that we can sort. And one of the ways that we can choose our pivot point is to choose the number in the middle of the list. And if we have a list of numbers that are somewhat randomly sorted, presumably a number in the middle will be approximately a number in the middle of the list. And so the way that we do that is we take the number in the middle of the list and we move that to the end of the list and we do that by just swapping the last element and the middle element. So we swap the 6 and the 8. And so now the 6 is our pivot point and is the last element in the list. Okay? Now we take, let me do the 8 in blue. Now we take a counter, and we start at the beginning of the list, and we have two counters. We have one counter that 
remembers where our last swap position is and one counter that we increment through the list. So our pivot point is a six, and so we're trying to move anything smaller than the six to the left and anything larger than the six to the right. So we start with our two counters, our pointers, and we say, is 10 smaller or larger than 6? 10 is larger than 6. And so we're going to increment one of our counters and leave the other one where it is. This one remembers the, thing, the first thing that's larger than our pivot point. This one remembers where we are and where we're going. Is 7 smaller than 6 or larger than 6? 7 is larger than 6. So we leave that point... Of uh, sorry, we leave the first one where it is, and we increment our second counter. Is 12 larger than 6 or smaller than 6? 12 is larger than 6, and so we increment our pointer. Is 8 larger than 6? Yes, it is. We leave it where it is, and we increment our pointer. Is 3 larger than 6? No, it's not. Now what we're going to do is we're going to swap the 3 and the element where our first counter is. So we swap these two things. So we end up with a list that is 3, 7, 12, 8, 10, 2, and 6. And remember, we have one counter here and one counter here. Now that we've done the swap, we actually increment this counter to the next position. This is the next thing in the list that's larger than our pivot point. Now we move our counter up. Is 2 larger than 6? No, it's not. So we're going to swap the 2 and the 7. And so we end up with a list that is 3, 2, 12, 8, 10, 7, and 6. We've done the swap, so we increment our counter. We're at the last element in the list before our pivot. So we've completely iterated through the list. And so the last thing we do is we take our pivot point and we swap it to where the counter is. Here's our pivot point. We don't need to adjust that anymore. We're done with that. And so now what we do is we go from the beginning of the list to the pivot point minus 1 and from the pivot point plus 1 to the end of the list. And as we're doing those swaps, as we're doing those increments, the cases where quicksort always causes the problems is you want to go through the list up until the last element but one, because the last element is your pivot. And you want to go from the beginning to the midpoint minus one, and from the midpoint plus one to the end. Okay? And so it's very important that you get that plus and minus one correct when you're doing the quicksort. Now, notice when we started, the first thing we did, initially the 6 was in the middle and the 8 was at the end, and we swapped these two elements. And I said that if you have, an almost, uh, if you have a randomly sorted list, then something in the middle is likely to be the midpoint of the list. But if you have a randomly sorted list, something at the end could just as easily be the midpoint of the list. And so, in fact, when you're doing quicksort, one of the ways that you can do it is just take the last element in the list as your pivot and use that and go through. 